What's happening YouTube, it's Mike French here and today we have a video that a lot of people have been waiting on. We have the first part to my Tundra Pre-Runner build series. So in this build series, I'm gonna be building this truck over the next couple of years into a real beast of a pre-runner. But today we're gonna to be taking off the Camberg mid-travel kit that I currently have and installing a Camberg long travel kit as well as some fiberglass fenders to complement that kit. So let's check out these parts that we're gonna be installing and then jump into the build video. Here we go. All right, so here's all the parts that we're gonna be installing today on the Tundra. Um, starting from left to right, we can see the Camberg uh, long travel kit. It comes with upper and lower A-arms and then all the necessary misalignment spacers, uh, bushings and hardware to install those. We also see that we have these inserts right here. These go into your OEM spindle so that you can run uh, this uniball right here on the top A-arm. Um, and so this kit pretty much replaces everything besides the OEM spindle, the OEM unit bearing, which is in the spindle, and then the lower ball joints. Um, so the one thing that I added to this kit that I did not purchase from Camberg, I purchased separately, are the OEM ball joints right here. So it's important to go with the OEM Toyota ball joints, not like a Moog or eccentric parts, because with this kit being as beefy and heavy duty as it is, the major strain is gonna be on the OEM spindle and then those lower ball joints. So put some brand new OEM ball joints on there. And then the spindle, I'm gonna be getting um, a gusset kit that actually welds onto the spindle um, to strengthen it. Um, and then you're usually good to go. So anyways, like I said, everything else I purchased from Camberg, the only thing I purchased separate are these Toyota OEM ball joints. So we got the upper and lower A-arms right there, all the hardware for that. Um, this kit extends the track width seven inches overall, three and a half inches per side. So that's why we have these extended brake lines right here. And then we have these stainless steel uh, tie rod extensions as well. Um, then we have the uh, limit straps with the weld on tabs right there in hardware, so that's good. And then over here we have our Fox dual speed compression uh, coilovers. These are $1,750 for the set. They are the more high-end uh, Fox shocks that they sell for this kit, I guess, if not the best coilovers they sell for this kit. Um, you can get Kings, you can get the lesser um, Fox coilovers without the dual speed compression, but I wanted to go big and make it work well. So that's what we're doing for now. Um, and then in the future, I'm gonna be doing a triple bypass on here as well with the Camberg um, bypass mount that welds onto the frame and then bolts onto the top of the OEM coilover bucket. Um, right here, we can see that these are the mounts for these, the top of the coilovers, because these are more like race style coilovers. They're not designed from the factory to be OEM bolt-on stuff. But those mounts right there let you bolt on to the OEM coilover uh, bucket in the truck. So that's the best part about this kit is there's no fabricating needed uh, when it comes to the shock mounts or anything like that. It's all that's pretty much bolt on and good to go. So that's all the hard parts right there. Coming down here, we have the fiberglass fenders. Uh, these are made by a company out of Costa Mesa, California called Advanced Fiberglass Concepts. Um, John and the guys over there are great. This is all hand-laid glass. They bought out Glassworks Unlimited, so all the molds are Glassworks Unlimited, and this stuff is great. Hand-laid, like I said, the gel coat looks great. It's not thin in certain spots. It seems very consistent. Um, everything on it. I deal with a lot of fiberglass with all the race trucks I prep, and this seems like some pretty good stuff. So I'm hoping it bolts up nicely on here, and I don't have to do too much, you know, fitting and cutting and whatnot. So that's the glass, advanced fiberglass uh, concepts at the Costa Mesa. I also have their bedsides for this truck, but that'll be in a future video. But for now, we're gonna be putting on this Camberg long travel kit and the glass. So let's tear down this Tundra, get that mid travel kit off and get it going. Here we go. So I just wanted to show you guys some of the tools I'm gonna to be using uh, to do this disassembly and then installation process of the long travel kit. So pretty much you're just gonna need a lot of metric stuff. Um, we have some metric open end wrenches. We have large metric impact sockets in one of those cases. And then we have some 3H drive uh, metric impact sockets as well. Um, thin wall, uh, 12 point metric sockets right there. I got some pry bars, um, you know, ratchets, um, Milwaukee impact guns, pliers, uh, screwdrivers. Just basic stuff, that's what you should need. The only specialty tool you might need is a press or a puller tool um, to do the insert into the spindle. But besides that, uh, basic hand tools will suffice. Um, you're also gonna need some jack stands and a jack. I do have lifts here that I could be using uh, to do this job, but most people are gonna be using jacks and a jack stand, so that's how I'm gonna do it. So those are, the, those are the tools. We'll probably need a few more things I'll pull out, but for the most part, I should be good to go right here. So let's jump onto the disassembly and make it happen. Here we go.
All right, so we got those wheels and tires off and the truck's up on jack stands now and we can see what we need to take apart. So um, we can see this mid travel kit that I got from Camberg. It's an upper arm with a swayway coilover on it. Um, and then we can see this wheel spacer right there that I also have to accommodate for the 35 inch tires I've been running. So all this has got to come off. We got to pretty much pull the front end down to the frame. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is take off the wheel spacer then we'll take off the caliper and the rotor. Um, then we'll separate the upper um, A arm from the spindle. We'll pull the spindle off, coil over out, um, you know, upper lower arm off. And then the one thing that gets completely deleted and not reused is the OEM sway bar assembly. So the arm, the bushings, the links, all that kind of stuff, that's gone. That doesn't even get reused. Um, and then we'll be taking the tie rods off as well because we have to put the tie rod extensions on. So pretty much just all comes off. So let's jump on into it. Let's get this thing disassembled and get it ready for that new kit. Here we go. All right guys, so check it out. This is where we're at with the disassembly process so far. We got the spindle off uh, that has a unit bearing on it. We got the caliper off that has the, the brake line and that soft line is gonna be the one we're gonna replace with the one that Camber gave us, the extended brake line. Um, rotors off, the coilovers off. We still got the upper A-arm up here. Uh, the bolt to the upper A-arm, it goes in this way. So it comes out from the back. Uh, I have the rubber removed right up there so that's easier to get out. Um, just make sure that you take off uh, this ABS line from the upper arm and put that out of the way. Um, and then when it comes to the lower A arm, I already tried to get, um, well, I got one bolt out already, uh, the front, but when it came to the back, when it, uh, to try to get that out, I realized that the rack is in the way. And it looks like if you went full crank to the left, you could maybe get that bolt out, but it's too difficult to really get an impact gun in there with a socket and stuff. So I'm gonna move the rack out of the way, unbolt it, and maybe push it up a bit. Um, and then also like that sway bar assembly right there, that's gonna completely come off as well. And that sway bar assembly, it's bolted from the top to the bottom. Um, the nut on the bottom's welded. So uh, it looks like four bolts and that comes out and that whole thing's gonna be gone. We're not gonna use it. I'll move the rack out of the way to get that other bolt out. And then we'll be able to get that lower A arm off. Um, and I wanna say in a racing situation or even on this truck, if I can, I'd rather the bolt go in like this so that when you pull it out, there's nothing there and you can get it out easy and swap something out quick, not have to move a rack or deal with something in the way. 
Um, also, you can see I have the lower um, you know, uniball assembly still on there because I'm using a new one. So if you're gonna reuse that, then I guess take that off, but I'm just gonna take the lower arm off and leave that on there. Um, and one more thing to note, I took a picture of my alignment shims right there, or the alignment washers, uh, front and back all around, so that when I put the new A-arms on, I can kind of have it in the general location of where they're at, so I can still drive it to the, the alignment shop or home for a day or two without the truck being too squirrely. Um, so yeah, so anyways, let's get the rest of this stuff off, and let's get the new stuff on. Here we go. All right, guys, so we got everything taken apart, upper, lower arms off. Um, we're pretty much good to go. All I gotta do is take off this tie rod right here to put that extension piece on, that'll be easy. Um, besides that, I wiped everything down with WD-40, which does a great job of uh, cleaning the grime and bringing back the shine to the OEM powder coat and protecting from rust. And as you can see, this truck really has no rust on it at all. I've never really driven it in sand or salt or water or anything like that. It's just my daily driver. I try to take care of it. Um, so then I did assess all the you know, shock mounts, the upper mount, um, and then these lower AR mounts, and everything does look good. Um, no cracks or anything like that, which makes me happy, but definitely these OEM mounts tend to crack sometimes when you pound your truck hard, because um, they are not that thick. It's just two uh, pieces of sheet metal together. But um, anyways, yeah, everything looks good, which makes me happy. So we can put these brand new parts on there and get it going. So let's jump to the table, let's see the parts, and let's get them on the truck. Here we go. Okay, so we got everything taken off the truck. We can see it here on the table. Um, most of the stuff we are not gonna be using. Again, all we're gonna be really using is, you know, like the rotor, the calipers, um, and then the spindles. But um, upper arms, coilovers, lower arms, that's all gonna go. And then for comparison, it's crazy to think that that arm right there is the same, well, not the same, but it's gonna fit on the same truck as that arm. So these guys are beefy. Look at those compared to those, crazy. So anyways, um, we pretty much just gotta start greasing stuff up, putting stuff together. We gotta grease up all the misalignment spacers, put them in the uniballs, grease up all the bushings and put that stuff together and then we can start bolting it up on the truck. So let's jump into that. Here we go. Okay, so it's time to grease up all of our misalignment spacers and bushings and then get these A-arms on the truck. So what we want to do with the misalignment spacers um, is you want to grease the, the edge right there, the shoulder, and then that gets inserted um, down there into your uniball. And when these are brand new, they can be very tight going into the uniball. Sometimes you need to get a very fine sandpaper or Scotch-Brite pad and hit this edge right here to let it go in easier. Um, but yeah, so pretty much we just need to grease this up high in. Uh, lithium grease or racing grease on that and then those will come out easy in the future for the bushings over here they do provide you with a special grease camberg does that comes in these packets so what you're going to do is you're going to put these bushings into the arm like that um, and then you're going to grease the inside of them and then you're going to grease the outside of this guy and then that will get pushed in so you'll have a bushing on each side and then that gets pushed in through the middle and then these washers right here will go on either side of that um, when you bolt it on to the truck so pretty much we're greasing the misalignment spacers and then we're greasing um, these guys over here. Um, and then besides that, um, you just gotta insert your Zerk fittings uh, so you can pump grease into these A-arms. So you actually uh, will insert those into the bottom right there in those holes. And then in the future, you can use a, a grease gun to pump uh, in grease. So what we're doing is we're greasing misalignment spacers, we're greasing bushings, and then we're gonna install the Zerk fittings and then that stuff is gonna be ready to go on the truck.
All right, people, so we have the misalignment spacers and the bushings all installed on our upper and lower A-arms. And one thing to note when we're talking about the misalignment spacers, which are these guys right here, is that Camberg will supply you with two bags. And at first glance, you'll think they're the same size, but actually one bag has small spacers and one bag has bigger spacers as of uh, the length. So that's because um, the back lower A-arm mount on the truck is a smaller spread than the front. So this is our passenger arm, and we can see the back mount towards the back of the truck has the smaller spacers and the front mount has the bigger spacers. And you would have found that out because the hardware um, is different lengths um, and stuff. So when you went to go fit it in, you would have been like, what's going on? But I just wanna let you know ahead of time that the smaller spacers go on the back and the bigger ones go on the front. So you're, there's no headache with that. Um, we got the upper A arms all put together. Uh, the bushings, you know, no problem. You just push those rubber pieces in. You grease the inside of the rubber piece and the outside of the insert. That all just goes together by hand. We have the Zerk fittings right here. They just self tap in and they kind of start getting tight a few turns in and then make sure they face out so you can get to them with a grease gun. Um, and then this kit uses all OEM hardware besides the fact that they supply you with uh, new nylock nuts and some washers. So this is your upper A arm bolt and they give you these nuts in the washers. Just make sure you clean up everything. This has all been uh, like cleaned up with a Scotch-Brite pad and stuff. And then we have the lower um, A-arm mount bolts right here and I cleaned all these guys up and I took a picture of where those were positioned. So we're gonna be good to go when everything goes back together and hopefully the alignment is pretty dead on. So anyways, I'm ready to grease this stuff up, put a little uh, drop of blue Loctite here and there and we'll be good to go. So let's get the stuff on the truck and let's make it happen. Here we go. All right, so we're on the passenger side and we got the upper and the lower A-arm installed. Lower arm had no problem at all. The upper arm is hitting in the same spot that the driver's side was, right there, you can see. Um, and it's just barely contacting it just by a smudge. So all I gotta do is grind it in that area about a quarter of an inch to eighth of an inch, and this, just like I did to the driver's side. And you'll see that right now, the travel of the upper A-arm is from there to here. And if I grind it, it'll go all the way down to about there. So that's just good. It just relieves something that could happen in the future because I don't like it binding right there. So let me grind that down and then put the rest of this together and make it happen. Here we go.
All right, guys, so it's time to get these coilovers put together. Um, and first things first, you're gonna need a spring compressor. I got a nice one on the wall right there, or you can go to like O'Reilly's or auto parts store and rent a spring compressor that kind of clamps on. But don't be using ratchet straps and stuff like that. That could definitely be dangerous. I've seen it go bad. So anyways, guys, um, to talk about these coilovers and what's going on, um, these were sent from Fox as a specific coilover for this kit. So that means that the clocking of these hoses and everything that's going on with how these are set up is specific for this truck. So these adjuster rings right here, which adjust the compression of the coil spring, and that is what you know determines your ride height. These are both at the same measurement. It's one inch and five sixteenth from the top of this ring to the bottom of that lip, and that's how I measure it. So I, the bottom of that lip is my reference point to the top of this ring. So that measurement was consistent from this coilover to that coilover. Um, and what that tells me is that they set this up to sit at ride height, or I mean at level, level ride height. Um, usually when people send coilovers that are set up for a specific kit, they'll send them at ride height, at level ride height. They won't send it like the front end dip down or the front end up. Usually if they're sending it out already with the rings, they kind of know what, you know, sits level and how, that's what most people want. So anyways, with the 35 inch tires I got, I need the front end to be about an inch higher than the back to make it work out well. So what I did is I dropped these rings down half an inch. So I compressed the spring more by half an inch. And I believe that's gonna lift the front end about an inch. It usually is around that. Like for every half an inch this ring drops, it'll lift about twice that um, usually. Depends from the A arms and geometry and whatnot. So anyways, so I'm, that's guesswork. I don't wanna have to pull these on and off to get the ride height. I'm hoping I can nail it first try and get that front end a little bit up, um, you know, compared to the back. But if I don't, I gotta pull these coilovers completely off the truck, put them back on the spring compressor, uh, readjust my nut and then put them back on. So that can be a pain. Sometimes we've had to pull the coilovers on and off the trophy truck multiple times to get the ride height dialed in. So that's just a note about that. Um, one thing is what we're going to do is we're going to put this over to the coil, uh, spring compressor. You're going to grab your coil spring and you are going to take off the O ring right here that holds these clamshell pieces on. Those will pop off and this retainer piece will slide all the way off. Once that's done, you get your coil spring and you slide it on and then you put it onto the spring compressor. You start compressing the coil spring and eventually the coil spring, it'll start about here. It'll start compressing and the bottom of it will reach past this point. So then you can put this retainer piece, you'll put that back on, and then you'll put these clamshell pieces back on with the O-ring, and then this piece will drop back in place, and it'll, it'll drop back in place, and it'll go just like that, boom. And at that point, you would undo the coil spring compressor, and it would open up, and then that's kind of how it's done. So I'll show you guys right now. We're gonna throw them on there, get these together, and then throw it on the truck. Um, you're just gonna throw these brackets on as well, make sure you get them at um, you know, how they're supposed to be clocked. You'll figure that out when you're about to bolt them up and then those just uh, bolt to the top right there. All right, here we go, let's make it happen. All right, so there we go. We got the coilovers all put together on the spring compressor, pretty painless process. And I just wanted to show you guys the size comparison between uh, what we pulled off and what's going on. So this is uh, a part of Camberg's mid-travel kit, which is their upper arm and then a coilover. Um, Fox also makes a coilover in that length now that, that comes with the kit. These are swayways. Um, so anyways, we see the size difference of the length of the coilover itself, the length of the spring, and then the increased uh, travel. Um, when you look at the shaft on this, compared to the shaft on this guy, which is going from there to there, you can see that we are literally almost getting twice the amount of shaft travel. I'd say it's 40% longer compared to what we have. So that's pretty cool. So um, with a longer arm, you need a longer coilover to reach out to the different mounting uh, point. But um, yeah, we definitely got increased travel. This is gonna be a major upgrade, especially with the dual speed uh, compression. Um, these are something that does not have that. So yeah, tunability is gonna be awesome. So anyways, these are ready to go. Let's get them on the truck and make it happen. Here we go.
All right, guys, so there we go. We have the coilover bolted up to the top of the um, shock tower. Um, and one thing I wanted to say is that it is pretty difficult to get these nuts and washers that are on the back side of this guy on. Um, I actually used a magnet to get the far one in because you can't even get your hand up in there. So um, it's a little difficult because it's not threaded, um, the, you know, the bracket like um, the other setup I had. So it um, can be a little difficult to get the nuts and washers on there, but it's possible. So I have it bolted up to the top, so the coilover is just hanging right now. Um, and the next step we, we're gonna do is put those brand new um, lower uh, ball joints on, and they're marked left and right. It says like R7 on it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy right there, boom, and then bolt it up um, with the nut and then put a cotter pin in it. And once that's all tight, then you can drop your spindle on that guy, boom. And once the spindle's on there, then we can pull this whole assembly together and bolt it up and then put the tie rod extension on it and be good to go. So let's jump into this and finish up the assembly. Here we go. Okay, so now it's time to put on the spindle and something that you're gonna have to do is remove the OEM ball joint that comes in the spindle. Now you see I already have this um, insert piece. This is um, a, a misalignment spacer insert so you can run the uniball in the upper A-arm. Now the reason I already have it in there is because the mid-travel kit I'm, that I ran before already had a uniball. Um, it's the same size uniball as the long travel kit. Now I did all the measurements and everything and um, you know the part supplied with the kit is identical to what I already had in there. So I'm not gonna press this out because when you press stuff in and out, it sometimes makes stuff bigger and why mess with something that is perfect and is gonna work. So um, anyways, but you guys that are going from stock to this kit are gonna have a um, OEM ball joint in here. So you'll have to get a ball joint remover tool and remove your ball joint and then you're gonna press this piece in um, from the bottom up. Um, you, you can use like an all thread and some sockets or they have tools to do it. And then once you press it up in there, you put on your clip um, on the top and then you're good to go. Um, and once that piece is on there, you can run the uniball that's on the upper A-arm. Just make sure to put some grease right there and you're gonna be good on the install. So let's get the spindle on the truck, and make it happen. Here we go. Okay, check it out. We got the spindle on. We have the coilover bolted up to the lower A-arm. So pretty much everything you see right here is all bolted up. Upper A-arm is bolted to the spindle. Um, so yeah, so pretty much 
Um, that all went together super easy. Um, just make sure you have a jack under there, um, kind of jack it up and whatnot. Um, you kind of need to align this uniball a bit to make it hit the misalignment spacer right because everything's drooped so far. And you can't jack this entire assembly up all the way because the spring, um, you know, the tension of it and stuff, it actually just pushes the whole truck up. Um, so anyways, that's all bolted up and good to go. Now it's time to put this tie rod extension piece on. So let's talk about that. So the tie rod extens extension piece is three and a half inches, exactly this piece right here. Um, so this kit is three and a half inches over on each side. So what I'm gonna do is I measured the threads right here behind the jam nut and I just broke this jam nut free. But I measured these threads showing and it's about three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is take off this piece, the t um, you know, the end of the tie rod, and then I'm gonna add the extension on and bottom it all the way out. And then when I put this end piece onto the extension, I should have the same amount of threads, that three quarter inch of thread showing right here as I do right there. And by doing that, hopefully the toe is close to what it is when, you know, before I took it apart so that I could drive this thing to the alignment shop. So let's finish it up and get everything together, guys. Here we go. Okay, so we got that tie rod extension piece on. You can see it right there. Um, and I actually kind of misstated earlier, the nut needs to go up here. And I kept the same uh, gap um, of threads that was when this piece was up there. So the, you know, the toe, the alignment should be pretty close. So anyways, you bottom out this end piece all the way onto the extension. And I actually put some blue Loctite in there because this doesn't need to break free from this extension piece. All your alignment is gonna be done up here where this jam nut is and stuff. So anyways, that's all good. That's ready to go. All I gotta do is bolt that onto the spindle right there, boom. And then um, pretty much, you know, put my um, rotor on, caliper on, um, the ABS line. There's a clip for the ABS line that comes off of that. Um, and then once that's all said and done, put the extended brake lines on, bleed the brakes, and then be good to go. So let's finish up the install and see what it looks like. Here we go. All right, well, there we go. We have that Camberg long travel kit all installed in the truck and ready to rock and roll. Overall, uh, the installation process was pretty painless and easy. Um, and I'm excited with this kit and how it bolted up and everything. It seems like a very high quality kit, as well as everything that Camberg uh, produces that I've dealt with. 
Uh, so anyways, uh, we have the coilover on there, all bolted up nice, ready to rock and roll. We have our upper A-arm that goes into the spindle that has the uniball or the ball joint assembly on the bottom. We have our rotor and our caliper right there. We have our Camberg lower arm right there. And then coming onto the back, we have a stainless steel tie rod connection. Um, there's some blue Loctite in there because all the adjustment is done right here where the jam that is. And then right here, we have the stainless steel um, braided uh, brake line assembly. Uh, that's, you know, just went right on, no problem. Everything is bled and ready to rock and roll. And then as of for the reservoir up here, it's just currently temporarily um, zip tied to the frame bracket over there. And I put some rubber on it to protect it because in a future video, I'll be making a bracket that bolts onto the frame and comes down and then I'll be welding on these uh, tabs onto that. And then the reservoir will be hose clamped onto these guys and be sitting on the bracket right there. Um, also in the future video, when we do that, I'm waiting on um, their bypass mount that bolts on the top of the tower and gets welded to here. And I'll be putting a triple bypass, a Fox triple bypass. that will go into that secondary shock mount right there. And also be putting on the limit straps at that point. You gotta weld onto the frame, uh, the tab for that. And then I'm also waiting on bump stop cans and Fox bump stops to be putting up here. But for the time being, I'm just driving around town um, and on the freeway with uh, no limit straps or no aftermarket bump stops is gonna be okay. But if I wanted to be crazy and make some, you know, insane Instagram videos, jumping train tracks and speed bumps and stuff like that, you would definitely want the limit strap and aftermarket bump stop because with the extended travel now, when you bottom this thing out hard, it could rip that shock tower off, not having a bump stop. And then letting the whole suspension assembly drop hard is not good for the internal bump stop, uh, you know, inside the coilover. Um, but right now I'm gonna be running this thing with the OEM fender. I did some trimming on the front and the back and I cycled you know, the wheels and everything and it's not gonna hit, but the wheel does stick out of the fender quite a bit. And if I was to actually hit something hard bottom out, uh, the amount of travel is actually about four or five inches higher than this. So it would rip the whole fender off. So just driving on the freeway, I should be fine. But if I wanted to run this setup right now and go do some crazy off-roading, it would not be that great. So in the future video, we're gonna be installing all the stuff to finish up that and then also be doing the fiberglass. Uh, but just to talk about what this kit did to the truck, um, it's seven inches wider up front, three and a half inches on each side. And overall, it just looks like, it looks like a mean kit. It's an awesome bolt-on kit in my opinion, uh, for what I've seen so far with bolting it up and just looking at how everything works. Um, the truck looks amazing. The amount of travel is you know, definitely 13 inches of wheel travel from you know, myself cycling it and looking at it right now. So I'm excited to get this kit all dialed in and ready to rock and roll in the future and you know, get it in the dirt. So that's that for this installation um, in this video. And in the future videos, like I said, we'll be putting all these other parts on, putting the glass on, and also be getting some new lights up here. So stay tuned for those videos and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and take care.